So, what's the harshest, most awful thing your boss has ever told you? <laughs> harshest. You sent me home once. I think you deserve that. I, you don't even remember why. Yeah, you were being you were being persnickety. I was not being persnickety. You were being awful. Well, no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. You just didn't agree with what I said. Okay. <laughs> Go home. Okay. See, <laughs> now I would say, okay, yeah, thanks. I'd be like, oh, I wish someone would tell me to go home. I would love to. <laughs> hey, Doke, why don't you go fly a kite? <laughs> okay. I love flying kites. So I always remember Kelly Clarkson was coming in that day, and I went home, and I was like, well, guess I don't get to talk to Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> well, you must have done something awful. I don't know. I don't even remember, really remember what we were fighting about, but it was, it was back in the day where I, I let too much bother me, and I had to find a way not to, and you yelled more than you do now <laughs> but i yelled more than i do now then too i was yelling at everything back in the day oh here comes bethany Hi. she wasn't here that then bethany uh, just, just <laughs> sat down with dan harris from abc news to talk about meditation how did it go it was actually really awesome it was really good we were just talking about how in the <laughs> hell do you do this in your normal life Especially if, like, let's say you're a single mom and you have three jobs. How do you find time to meditate? You're too busy taking care of everybody else. Um, so it was, so they were talking about basically like triage meditation, like meditating while you're doing other stuff. It's true. And how to figure out how to do that, which is very helpful. Da is Danielle up now? I think Danielle's up now. I'm going to meditate while I'm cooking and see what happens. You should. <laughs> see if I drop something on my foot. I think you're up. Go I'm talk going, to Dan Harris. Okay. He doesn't want to talk to me about why he sent me home that day. No, but the question was, what is the harshest thing your boss has ever told you? Yeah. Why are you smiling? Because I had a boss tell me I was too weird and I wasn't connecting well to people. Did I tell you that? No. <laughs> Did I say that? I say that. It no, wasn't, you never said that. Was it someone here? Uh, it, it was feedback I received at one point in my life. Okay. You. And what was that feedback again? I was too weird and I wasn't connecting well with people. Oh, I can see that. Shut <laughs> up, man. What's scary? Um, when I first started working here, it was a, a radio DJ from another city. I wanted them to critique my on-air tape. Right. And they said that I sounded like uh, I needed to get rid of the accent. They called me an, an, an Italian word that was not nice, that I, that I found offensive. And they said, yeah, you'll never make it in radio. You better go to a vocal training school or something. So I, I thought it was pretty bad. No, but you, Elvis, you've never, as my boss, you've never told me anything no. that was disparaging. <laughs> well, oh, really? Well, well, not about your no. the way you sound. No, I like the way you sound. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the worst that was ever told me was, you have no talent, you have a stuttering problem, you will never make it in radio, you should oh, quit. Wow. I Where's was, that person now? I have no idea where Bob McKenzie is. <laughs> Bob McKenzie, the program director of KIKM in Sherman, Texas, told me that. I have no idea. I mean, I hope he's still at KIKM Sherman because that would be <laughs> that would be a fate worse than death. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But you know what? I, I will tell you. I'll thank Bob McKenzie for telling me that because it actually motivated me to prove him and others like him wrong. Amen. You yeah, know? it's R right. It's sort of amazing if you look at people who are really successful in their field. How many of them were told they would never be successful in their field? Mm -hmm. You among them. Yep. What's up, Frog? I worked for somebody for about eight years and then decided that I wanted to leave and try and do other things. And they told me that I was, quote, committing career suicide and that I would fall flat on my face and that if I came back and needed a job, there would be no job for me. Wow. And he, how is he these days? I don't know. You could actually walk down the hall and ask him if yeah, he That's liked. right. He, he, he works here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy in radio named Randy Kabrick, and I turned down a job that they were offering me in Los Angeles. And he told me I would never work in this business again. Mm. Wow. So did you see him again after you? Yeah, absolutely I did. <laughs> oh, and did he admit he was wrong? He had, he had no choice. I mean, right. he, I, 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 I'm like, remember that time you told me I would never work again because I didn't accept the job you offered me? What did he say? Well, I guess I was wrong. Yeah, I guess you were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank well, you. but again, a, a motivator, you know. Well, and it's a good reminder that when someone says that to you, it is simply their opinion. Because clearly there is proof that people have gone on past a negative comment like that to succeed. So if somebody says that to you, it is their opinion. I don't think it I've ever. I don't think I've ever given someone a line like that, telling them that they aren't good enough to do something. I don't. I would never do that to someone. I don't <laughs> think you have that in you well, to say are, that to someone. Who are we to say that to anyone? Yeah. Well, not only that. If you work with somebody and they're your coworker. 
and they're going to leave and try to better themselves, and you tell them that they're no good, then why are you working with them in the first place if they're no good? That's a good point. Well, because you feel like they're insulting you by leaving. It really has nothing to do with you. It's them. Right. Hey, Lisa. How Hi, guys. Are... Hey, how are you? Happy Monday. How are you? We're doing Happy well. Monday. What can we do for you, Lisa? <laughs> so this is on a completely different level of harsh, mm-hmm. but it's the first thing I thought of when you said what's the harshest thing your boss has ever said to you and I was about nine months pregnant with my first child and I was starting to having starting to have contractions and I told my boss I had to leave and she said to me can you please wait until my co-worker comes back to lunch <laughs> like no I'm having a baby <laughs> no can you have the baby can you postpone the baby can we right can I can I just hold off and wait for her to come back, and then I can go to the hospital? Are you serious? <laughs> That's insanity. Well, so, of course, you didn't wait, I'm hoping. Of course I didn't wait. I was out the door. But... Yeah. I, and now, what is your uh, relationship with that boss now? Oh, I don't work there anymore. Yeah, I didn't think you would. <laughs> Good for you, Lisa. Congratulations on being a mommy, too. That's really cool. Oh, thank you, guys. Happy Monday. Great to talk to you. You, too. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Hello, Tara. Hello, lady. Well, hello, lady. So what did your boss tell you? So I was working in a law firm, and he was actually a really close friend of my dad, and he didn't like what I did one day, and he asked me if I had a brain. Oh, so my goodness. <laughs> Do you have a brain? Let me think about it. No. You know what? You're right. Maybe I don't have a brain. I don't have a brain. Gosh, who if even I says only that had kind a of brain. thing? Do you have a brain? <laughs> yes, it was horrible. How so stupid. I quit right after that. I don't blame you. You do have a brain, don't you? Of course you do. I think so. <laughs> yeah, you definitely do. Thanks for listening to us, Tara. I love you guys so much. You Thank make my you. morning every morning. Thank you very much. That makes me feel it makes me feel good when people say that. People say, I bet you hear this all the time. You're tired. No, I don't hear it enough. Thank you very much, Tara. <laughs> Thank you guys. Take care. Hello, Shirley. Hi, good morning, guys. Good morning. What did your boss what did your boss tell you? Well, I was working at a receptionist um position and I filled out for an inside position to get promoted and my boss told me no because I was just too happy. Too happy? That says so much about the person and not about yeah, you. Exactly. We don't we don't want you to be happy here at this job. You, you're too happy. Really? Yes. yes. Well You don't sound that happy to me. <laughs> <Are> you- <laughs> oh, no, oh, shh, be quiet. You're starting to sound happy. You don't want anyone to know that.